Hello everyone, and welcome to this new Greenleaf Vision tutorial. In this video, I want to show you all the important functions and features of the new Broadleaf Trees biome. First of all, we navigate to the Maps folder. Here we open the map called Demo Map Broadleaf Trees PCG. When opening the map for the first time, it can take a long time to load. This is because Unreal Engine has to create cache files of all contained meshes when loading for the first time. After the map has been loaded once, it opens after a few seconds when it is loaded again. Don't be put off by the first visual appearance of the map. We will now make a few changes to the settings until we achieve this visual result. Let's get started. The map and the vegetation are currently configured to provide the best possible performance. In addition, Hardware ray tracing is used as well as some console commands, which are only activated when the play mode is started. Let's take a quick look at the console commands. We open the level blueprint. We immediately see that the screen percentage is set to 50%, as well as a few other ray tracing commands. We can leave the settings as they are. The input commands are activated when play mode is started. As you can see, the exposure for the trees has changed. We will now change the shadow settings. To do this, we first select the directional light. Now we enter ray tracing in the search field. We see the option cast ray traced shadows, which is set to enabled. We now set this to use project settings. We do this so that the shadows of our vegetation also move. We now open a foliage tool. For the foliage types just marked, we will now activate the shadows and change the value for world position offset disable distance so that the plants also move at a greater distance. We scroll down to instance settings and see the option cast shadow, which we activate. We now set the value for world position offset disable distance to 12,000. Increasing this value requires more GPU power. You can set the same settings for the grass if you wish. Please note that this requires a lot of GPU power. Therefore, the shadows for all blades of grass have been disabled in the free demo. We close the foliage tool and navigate to the PCG directory. We see four different PCG graph variants. We open the first variant A, which is used on our current map. We select all static mesh spawner nodes. Now we enter world position offset in the search field. And again, we set the value for world position offset disable distance to 12,000. Now all the trees that are further away also move. We search for shadow cache. We will now change the mode for the shadow cache invalidation behavior option. This is currently set to static so that the shadows of the trees do not move. We will now set this to auto. If you want to keep the settings permanently when you use the PCG graph again, save it. Save the map to retain all changes. Now you also have the option of setting an improved exposure. You can find this in the HQ lighting folder. Open type A. You will now be asked whether you want to save the foliage types for which we have previously activated the shadows. In my case, I do not save them. Select all three components and copy them. We now open our previous map again. Now select the same five components as shown in the video and remove them. Paste the components you just copied. Now we have made all the important settings to get the best visual game experience. We will now look at the Global Foliage Actor. Always drag the Global Foliage Actor into your scene to operate the wind controls and the seasons options. Now let's take a closer look at the wind strength function. A value from 0 to 20 can be set for the wind strength. The default value on this map is 8. The wind strength has an influence on the entire vegetation in this scene. The wind strength animation slider can be used when rendering cinematics. This avoids jerky movements and creates a dynamic wind experience. 
Let us now continue with the wind strength auto switch function. This function automatically switches back and forth between two predefined values. Set the value to 1.0 to activate the auto switch function. The two fields below determine the minimum and maximum wind strength values between which the system automatically switches back and forth. Each individual slider function of the global foliage actor can also be controlled directly in the sequencer without any problems. In addition, the wind strength can be adjusted manually for each individual tree. This offers additional flexibility in the setting options. We also have the option of changing the wind direction via the global foliage actor. This function has an influence on the entire vegetation in the scene. The displayed wind interface is also included in the asset, and you may already know it from the free demo. It opens automatically when you start the play mode. Otherwise, simply rotate the global foliage actor to change the wind direction. The brightness of the leaves can be adjusted using the leaves brightness slider. Set this as you wish. You can strongly influence your scene just by the brightness value of the leaves. We now come to the settings for the seasons. In the global foliage actor, you will find a fall amount slider under the season heading. The autumn slider can be used to change the leaf color. There are other possibilities for color variation. More on this in a moment. The grass vegetation has a separate fall slider. This is useful in certain situations and helps you to make more precise settings. You can also use the autumn saturation to adjust the tone value. I would now like to show you how you can quickly and flexibly change the color variation of the vegetation. To do this, we navigate to textures and open the color vary folder. We open color vary B. The color variation can be influenced very easily by changing the values or exchanging this texture. Let us continue. We navigate to the materials directory color vary, MF, and open the material function G2. With the help of this texture sample, we can replace the current fall color variation texture with a texture of our choice. You can also create your own textures, giving you a wide range of options. By changing this value, we can determine the scaling of our color variation texture. we can immediately see the result of our changes. There is also the snow function, which has an optical effect on the tree leaves, the bark, and the ground. These functions can be combined with each other as desired. A winter map is also included. We now take a look at the windless tree variants. The meshes that are located directly in the windless folder still use mask leaf material. Compared to the tree meshes with opaque materials, these have the advantage that you can change the leaf textures and therefore also the shape of the leaves. This is not possible for opaque meshes as they are complete geometry leaves. In the Leaf Settings section, you can hide the leaves using the Hide Leaves option. Set the value to 0 to hide the leaves and to minus 1 to show them again. Please note that this function does not work with the opaque mesh version. The Japanese maple is in the Japanese folder. These meshes also use mask leaf material. It must be mentioned that meshes with opaque materials always achieve better performance. Especially when using nanite meshes, mask leaf material brings a clear deterioration in performance. That is why all wind trees are meshes with opaque material. Now let's look at how we can influence the leaf density for opaque meshes. In this example with the wind tree in volume 1 folder type B. Each wind tree consists of three mesh parts, branches and trunk without leaves, and two leaf parts. 
These are divided in such a way that you can vary the leaf density by placing only one of the two leaf meshes in the seam. It is possible that with a later update, further functions will be added concerning the leaf density for opaque meshes. Please note that the folders Volume 1 and Volume 3 are only available in the opaque mesh version. These are visually greatly improved meshes from Trees Volume 1 and Volume 3. As a second example, we place the Wind Tree Type J in our scene. The Wind Strength Auto Switch function is currently activated. A special feature of this asset is that you can change the bark texture for each individual tree. This is only possible because no photogrammetry was used in the creation process of the tree trunks. To do this, we navigate to the trunk material directory of the desired tree and open the trunk material instance. In the global texture parameter value section, you can exchange all the necessary textures. In this example, an alder bark texture from Quixel was used. We can also scale the texture as required. I hope this tutorial has helped you to better understand the functions. You are always welcome to visit us on our Discord server to ask further questions. Thank you and see you soon.